Hey, what's up and welcome back to another episode of Something Fishy. This week, we are preparing to go on a trip to Hawaii. So I got a bunch of flies I've been tying and this is one of the ones that we're gonna tie for you today. This is a little gurgler shrimp. It's about three inches long on a size two gamakatsu B10S hook. It's got foam on the top, so it's gonna float a bit. I don't know about the way I should maybe use a thicker foam. I may do a couple ones with different size foams to make sure that I can stay on the surface. So this gets a more of a popping sound, but I will be casting it most likely with a spinning rod with a whipping setup. So it may not really matter too much. All right. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and all right, let's get in there and let's tie this fly. All right, so let's tie our fly, the gurgler shrimp, basically. Okay, so what we're gonna need, what we're gonna be using here is, uh, here's our hook, Gamagatsu B10S, two watt. Thread we'll be using is just some uh, UTC 140. That's all I have. Uh, I should use something thicker, but it's all right in black, and then also some uh, Danville monofilament fine uh, thread as well. We previously made some eyes, so we'll probably do a how-to on to make these eyes. These are uh, UV resin eyes with glitter. They are pretty cool. They sparkle a bit. Really nice. All right, so we'll be using a bit of the back side of some bucktail where it has the, the natural coloration and also a little bit of accent orange from a uh, calf tail for like mouth parts. And then for uh, our foam, we'll use just some thin two millimeter tan foam. You can change that up for the color that you're trying to, the shrimp you're trying to match. And then we're going to use some uh, Spirit River UV2 shrimp dubbing in tan. And then a uh, mono flash in pearl and black. And that's, I believe, everything that we're going to be using. Kind of a lot of ingredients, but it looks really good when you're done. All right. Let's get our hook. The device I use is a Renzetti Traveler. Good device. Really enjoying using it. All right, so we're gonna start our black way up here in the front. Get some thread down. And we're going to first lay down our mouth coloration. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of the orange. Up the under fur. All right, let's put that right on top of the hook right there. Ooh, don't cut my thread. You can cut that or wrap it in. I'm just going to wrap it in. It doesn't really matter. It's going to all disappear. Next, we're going to add in our bucktail in the natural. Just we want that very variated color. Looks more natural that way. That's the way I tie it, and that's my mindset when I do that. <laughs> All right, so there's just our front face part. Kind of builds up the head here. We want it about like that, about an inch and a half off, inch. We don't want so much extra material. We'll just cut the back end off of that. All right. Put 
that in there. Wrap that in. Now don't wrap it too tight. You want to wrap it kind of loose so it doesn't splay out. You start pulling it too tight, it's going to start splaying out. So you can wrap it tight down here, like this way. I should have cut that off. It's okay though. It's going to all disappear with the dubbing. All right. Now let's get our flash in. So what I do is I just I get a little bit of each one. And there's really not like a I just kind of use like four of each, four black and four of the pearl. I got a bunch of pieces laying around trying to use up real quick. All the other ones I cut over here. And I do them at different lengths. Because if you have two if you have them at the same length, they, they kind of will uh, catch each other and get stuck together. So if you vary the lengths, it helps that not happen. So I'm literally just cutting four of each black and Pearl. Let's get one more little piece for this one. Oh, that one curled all up. That's fine. Get all the butts lined up on one end. Now just stick that right off the top there. And you can have that a lot longer, you know, three or four inches out. Those are supposed to mimic antennas and little little things in the front of the shrimp. There you go. Very simple. I'm kind of being very sloppy about the back here, but it doesn't matter. It's bothering me either way. <laughs> All right, now it's time for the eyes. We're going to use red eyes. I, w I don't have any orange glitter. So this is what I got. It's like a real dark red. So you lay those on the side. Wrap that in. Now I like to put the eyes like about a half inch past the hook. Wrap it up to the front, make sure that looks good. Now you can just bend this over and tie the other side in, but it seems to fight me a lot, so I just cut it off. Make sure you give yourself enough mono to tie in. I almost didn't right there. All right. Now what you can do if you wanna be more controlling on the way these eyes are sitting, You can start to put wraps in the front of the eyes and those will peel those out a bit. But I, I on, honestly, I don't really do that very often. I do a couple just to kind of keep it off. But before I cast it, I manipulate the eyes into the way I want them to be anyway. Especially if they're all jammed in your box with a bunch of other flies, they kind of get moved around anyway. All right, so that's what that looks like. All right, now that's ready. So at this point, we can get our dubbing loop prepped. What we'll do is fold over about a four inch piece of loop. Now I'm gonna pull that back, get that out of the way. Honestly, I'm done with it. Let's be done with it. Let's get our, our dubbing spinner. Hang our line. Let's just tie this off right here. Let's give a few wraps for texture back here though. Probably didn't need to do that. We're just gonna wrap it with dubbing anyway. Go. That's good to go.
good. All right, now we're going to, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to get our mono line and start that. You can use color line if you like. I'm using a mono because I don't have a good color that would match this right now. And I didn't want to use black, it sticks out way too much. All right, so with the foam here, that's what we're ready for now. So I got these pieces right here. Uh, I don't know, what are they? Five by three inches or something like that. What I'm doing is cutting about a millimeter strip off the short side. And so I'm just laying it on my cutting board here. And it's got a grid on it. I'm sure I don't need to show you that. And I'm just cutting with a razor knife a one one centimeter strip or so. All right. You got that, your strip. Now you want to cut it into a long point, it's about an inch long. There you go. It's not perfect. It's not even. There we go. <laughs> That's good enough. Now with this right here, we're going to tie it in on top using your clear mono line thread. And you don't want to get too aggressive with the uh, with the line. You will slice it, so kind of go easy with the first couple, and then after you get it on there, you can work your tension up a little more and pull it a little tighter. And I'll give it a little cushioning so you don't tear into the foam, and then a couple past it, behind it, and I want to bring it to where our next segment is going to be, which is going to be right about there. We're going to have one large segment, one smaller segment, and we're gonna progressively get smaller. We're gonna have three three smaller segments. So that was, that was probably confusing. <laughs> All right, so now let's get our dubbing loop ready. Let's get our dubbing. All right, what I do is I cut a corner off and start pulling it out. Now, if you do it this way, you pull it like this, what you're doing is you're actually stretching a lot of the fibers right off the bat. You're saving a lot of time in the end because you're going to have to rip it apart like this anyway to get all the fibers in a, for, for the most part, straight line. I'm going to add that into my dubbing loop and maybe thin that out. That's a little bit thick. we go. Let's grab more. We're going to get about five inches, four inches or so. Of the stubbing loop filled up. So far I've been cutting off a little bit and I've been doing about five inches so we'll do a little bit less. I'm tying about six of these or so for this trip coming up. I do have more of a pink color, but I don't really want to go with that. I want to actually do like some blues, but I don't really have any blue dubbing that's natural looking. Give like that fresh molted look. Kind of ghostly looking. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to spin it up. And I'm going to take my little dubbing brush and I'm just going to tease it slightly. You can really start tearing these fibers out if you if you are not careful, but I just lightly tease it. Get those fibers outward and pulled out that are wrapped underneath. There we go. Looks pretty good already. And then you got a little collection right there you can pull off and use for dubbing for the next one. 
So pull all your dubbing to one side. Don't get too aggressive because you can pull them right out. And now I'm going to wrap to our next section, segment in the shrimp. And always trying to pull back the fibers so you're not over wrapping. All right, to our section, what we want to try to do is kind of separate these fibers a bit so we're not wrapping up too many. Give that a bunch of wraps. Now you take your brush again and brush back to the brush the sides and kind of split the top because that top is going to have the foam on it. All right, so pull our foam over and do the same thing. Do like a slightly firm wrap and then gradually get a little tighter as you do more wraps. Like I was saying, if you just jump right in and pull tight, you will slice the foam. Especially with this really strong mono line. It's pretty thin for its size, so you, you, you tend to crank on it a little more than you would normally. All right. So then working your way down to the next section, which is going to be about a, nah, half the distance. Oh, I dropped my loop. There we go. All right. Continue to wrap. This is a really simple fast fly. This is why another reason why I like this one. It's like just short of a guide fly. You probably could drop a few material and call it a guide fly. All right, got good enough amount of wraps. Brush out, brush flat, pull it around, pull it over. And try not to hook yourself like I just did. Boom. If that was a thinner hook, I would have went on my thumb pretty good. But seeing it's a pretty big hook, hoping to catch them, catch some big fish. So <laughs> going big with it. All right. Go back to the next section, which is about half of the distance of that one. Start pulling our dubbing down a bit. Be running out perfectly this time. All right, tie that off, and you can actually go back on your thread with your dubbing loop, and you can cut that off now. Once you locate your scissors. <laughs> My scissors disappeared. All right, there we go. I need to clean this bench up. Jeez. All right. Wraps, go underneath ones. And we're just going to put that last little segment in there. It's going to bring it right to the eye. Just to give a little more realism to the fly, more segments. I'm not happy with the way that's wrapping there. There we go. Might as well get it right. You know what? That one is too close, and we're just going to call it right there. So we're going to whip finish that out. And this one's going to be a segment less, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. The fish aren't going to care. They won't see the segments anyway. That's more for us. 
cooler it looks, the more confidence you have in it. All right, got that. Now we get to do some of the fine work. So you want to cut the this off here, your foam, to a nice little tail. Straight cut's all you need to do, really. And you got that profile going good. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that all of your fibers are pulled downward and forward. Down and forward. This fly's looking really good on that other side that you're looking at. This side's not the best. That's all right. That usually doesn't happen that way. Usually the side that you're tying on looks better. All right, so now we want to, here, let's turn this upside down. We want to tidy this up a little bit. Okay, so we want to slowly work up an angle towards the front. Don't get too aggressive. Maybe pull out some loose fibers. There you go. Turn it over, hit your, uh, your knot and thread with some glue. And you're done. Got a little gurgler fly ready to hit the top water. Now, all I do is I just adjust these how I like them. You, what you can do is you can put a little dab of like UV resin inside the base of where the eye is, and you can hit that, and that will lock that into place. But I'm fine with the way it is. All right, there you go. Boom. All right, so if you enjoyed the tie. Please like it and uh, subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.